Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a comparison between the Lenovo Yoga 9 iGen 7 on the right and the HP Spectre X360 14T on the left. Now the 9i is brand new, in fact you can't even order this configuration yet, it'll be available in May, that's what I hear, and pricing should be somewhere around $2,000 for this top of the line build. The 14T has been on the market for roughly a year, dropped down from a little under $1,800 to roughly $1,550, definitely more value oriented, but it is still rocking that Intel 11th gen chipset, slower RAM, slower NVMe SSD compared to the 9i. But keep in mind that the 9i is really, in my opinion, playing catch up with the Spectre uh, because it finally has an OLED screen option. It finally has an IR camera that is full HD, Windows Hello uh, compatible. It finally has... Uh, you know, an edge-to-edge -edge keyboard, a uh, complete redesign that I think it really needed, soft, uh, rounded corners, a very modern design language that just didn't exist on the older 9i and C940 before it. So the Spectre's got a lot going for it. Similar battery life, similar webcam, similar display quality, similar keyboard, similar trackpad, uh, similar charge time even. And that's what I plan on going through uh, through the entirety of this video. So let's start off with the display. Again, 3 by 2 aspect ratio on the left. It is an OLED, 3000 by 2000, excellent, uh, as is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio 4K OLED on the right. Both of them are 60 hertz, both of course have pen input uh, and touch capability, but let's take a look at these displays. And I'm not playing any audio because we're gonna do an audio test as well for those of you that are wondering. Uh, what I've personally seen thus far from these two displays is that they are incredibly similar. And I think you're all going to see that that's gonna come through in this video. But I'm curious, which all of you are gonna think is the better of the two. Now, I personally favor the aspect ratio on the right. Uh, the 16 by 10 is preferable to me personally, but I know for many of you, you're going to prefer the three by two. It really depends on what you plan on doing. We've got letterbox uh, in effect here because neither screen is 16 by nine and the content that is playing back is 16 by nine. So if you even noticed, granted anything that's uh, a scene that's predominantly bl uh, black, it's going to blend right in and you really are going to struggle to to see uh, the letterboxing in effect. But overall, I think both of these are really excellent panels. In fact, uh, they're nearly identical in my opinion. So I'm curious to see what all of you think, um, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right there. When we get to performance, I mentioned earlier that with uh, the 9i, we have newer hardware, and that is absolutely true. We're dealing with, uh, of course, an Intel Core i7 12th gen processor, the 1260p, it's 12 cores, completely redesigned, uh, unlike the 11th gen that's in here. There were two gens of 11th gen chips uh, that the 14t has sported over its lifespan from launch, the 1165 and then the 1195, which was a bump in clock speed and not a slouch, but of course, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to CPU performance, you're going to want this. And that's clearly demonstrated right there by the CPU score difference uh, in Time Spy. Granted, this is you know a gaming benchmark. Both of these can game. They both have Iris XE graphics, but there's no question if money is not a priority in terms of you don't absolutely need to make budget with going with 11th gen, uh, do yourself a favor and get the 12th gen CPU. Now, if that means waiting for the Spectre because you prefer the design language, do that because I can't recommend, it's not that you know the average user is going to see a huge difference, you will not. In day-to-day -day computing, it really won't make that much of a difference. But when it comes to anything that's heavier than day-to-day, you know, there is a fairly big gap, I think, and it isn't worth necessarily saving the money if performance is your number one priority. Even though it won't be worlds apart, that's just my personal opinion. Now, moving away from that 12th gen versus the 11th gen chip, the next component is the RAM. Both of these have soldered RAM, both have 16 gigs, but with the 12th gen chip, you are getting uh, LPDDR5 and that just isn't possible here with the 11th gen. That's another inherent advantage, uh, and you cannot upgrade that RAM, so whether you go with an 8 gig model or a 16 gig model, just be aware that the RAM is faster. And the same applies to the NVMe SSD. The hard drive that is inside here 
uh, in both of these, they are not the same. And that's because here with the 11th gen, you have a Gen 3 drive, and that means Gen 3 speeds. Whereas, of course, with the 9i, with the Gen 4 speeds, you can see there's a clear difference. Now, I did just notice that the brightness is too high, and I'm glad I caught that because uh, if I didn't, we would be looking at a washed out image through the course of this entire video. So basically, you know, you can see that the Gen 4 speeds are pretty much, they're close to double the performance of Gen 3. Now, how much of that you're going to see in real world tangible results? I, I'm not going to try to persuade you because you aren't necessarily going to see it. But again, knowing that all of the hardware on the right is superior to all of the hardware on the left, it's important. Now, when it comes to Wi-Fi performance, we have a wash, pretty much. And that's good news because, after all, many of you already know, the 9i last generation uh, was plagued with Wi-Fi issues. I didn't experience a lot of them myself, but all you have to do is a simple search to find out that many users did. That's not the case here with the Gen 7 model, and that's important. Now, the Spectre had no Wi-Fi issues, so that's why they're on even keel. And just like with the display, pretty much even keel yet again. So really, so far, design language and internal specifications are the key difference between the two machines, even though that's not a vast difference. And I'm going to reiterate that over and over again. So let's talk about uh, actual battery life and, you know, runtime. And then I'll uh, give a little bit of an audio test on here as well, because I think that's pertinent um, as I'm trying to get out of steam there. So when it comes to battery life, you may expect that because this has a beyond 4K resolution and it's OLED, uh, that it wouldn't be able to keep up with the Spectre's battery life. Well, actually, you know, Lenovo threw in a 75 watt hour battery, so they're about even. You're looking at six to eight hours, and I'm saying, you know, if you have brightness cranked all the way up on these panels respectively. However, if you actually are aggressive with battery management, you can see 10 hours out of both of these, and that's really impressive. Uh, now, it's more impressive, in my opinion, with the 9i because of the higher resolution display, the more powerful processor. So I find that to be more impressive. But still, for a machine that's a year old in terms of design and architecture running it, that's still very impressive for something that is significantly less expensive. Again, we're talking about roughly a $500 difference between these two. It's not chump change. It's significant. But if you don't care about that difference, then the 9i right now in my opinion, still has the lead. Now, when it comes to uh, the keyboard, you know, again, it seems like Lenovo replicated what was done with the Spectre 14T. We have an edge-to-edge -edge deck. Uh, and in addition to that, they've actually eliminated the keys you see here and instead created hotkeys of sorts, one for uh, performance cycling, battery saver, performance, and a quiet mode or cool mode. And by the way, good news, this machine does stay a lot cooler than the previous generation. Then they have a dedicated button for their webcam to defocus the background. I'm not sure how many people are gonna use that. Uh, then they have an audio button to take you through uh, the gaming preset, music preset, and movie preset. And then last but not least, they have a uh, theme mode for the night theme versus day theme, dark mode on Windows 11. Then the fingerprint scanner. Fingerprint scanner is right here on the 14T. Now, personally, I think the keyboard is better on the Spectre. I'm partial to them, more key travel. I like the layout better. I like the fact that we have illuminated mute keys for both the microphone and speaker system. You don't have to go to toggle it or look at the display to see if it's actually muted. You know because there's an amber light telling you it's muted. Similarly to the power button, uh, you have an LED there. Uh, here, are the power button's on the side of the machine, not on the deck for anyone that's wondering. But the 9i's keyboard is still very good. It just isn't as good as the HP. And quite frankly, when it comes to the Spectre lineup, it is the best out there when it comes to keyboard performance. Now, when we talk about the trackpad, major difference on the 9i versus last gen. It's 45% larger, uh, but... I think they're pretty close. And that's important because the 9i last year was, the trackpad left a lot to be desired. It was a revamp, a new trackpad. Um, and personally, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, some people absolutely hated it, but they did away with it. And this is much better in my opinion. Uh, responsive, glass, um, the click is satisfying. It's solid. You're not going to have problems with it. I think that's a big deal. Uh, the smaller trackpad on 
the HP, the experience is pretty much the same, but I think a lot of people are still going to be drawn to the HP because it's got that tried and true performance that just isn't there um, historically with the 9i. But I have to say, this is the best trackpad that the 9i series has ever had. It's not just larger, it performs as it should. So I think they're about a draw here. Personally, I mean, I don't care that this one is larger on the right. Some people will love that. Some people will prefer the smaller one because you're less apt to actually end up having uh, your wrists interfere with it. But Lenovo has gone to great uh, lengths to try to prevent, um, you know, miss or accidental touches on the trackpad. And it works fairly well. But I think the smaller trackpad is going to satisfy most of you because it's still fairly large and you're going to be less likely to trigger it accidentally. So... We've covered keyboard, we've covered trackpad, we've covered display quality. Again, I'm going with the 9i just because I prefer the higher res display and the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. When it comes to these Windows IR cameras, which I'm so glad I can finally say they both have them, uh, they're very close as well. Five megapixels here, full HD here, HP has the edge. But Lenovo has come a long way from the previous generation. But again, the fact that HP still has the edge and this is a year-old machine says a lot about, again, the catch-up that is uh, going on between these two machines. Now, beyond that, I mentioned battery life and that, you know, they're very similar, and they are. I didn't talk about charge time, and I'm sure many of you are wondering. With the included power bricks, you're looking at roughly two hours here and roughly two hours here. So I think that's excellent. But again, it took another generation for Lenovo to have the rapid charge capability to actually get you up to two hours in 15 minutes and to get you a full charge in two hours. So they're even on even ground now, but it took a whole new generation. So again, you know, remnants of that catch up, although... I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of. And that's part of the reason the 14T is still incredibly relevant, even in its slightly older age and existence. Now, let's take a look at the speakers, really a listen. And then I'm going to get to uh, discussing something completely different, which is thermals. And I, I know that's something that people absolutely are curious about, um, and we're going to get into it. So uh, let's start off by going to... Let's just go to some Yoga 9i coverage here. It is the newer machine. Let's go to 2022. And, you know, this is really excellent. This is excellent. I keep saying it because it's just true. You're not going to be disappointed. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this up. I want you to hear what the audio quality is like on this. believes everyone deserves a fast, affordable, and reliable network. That's why we continue to invest billions to... here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my first update on my experience with the Lenovo Yoga 9i for 2022. Now, this is the seventh generation of this top-of-the-line 2-in-1 Ultrabook, and it has been completely reimagined, and the good news is they did an excellent job. Now, granted, this is just an update, not a full review, but so far I am thoroughly enjoying what Lenovo has put together. And yes, we have brand new internals, Intel's 12th gen uh, Core i7-1260p 12-core CPU, as well as uh, 16 gigs of soldered LPDDR5 RAM, a 1 terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD, Wi-Fi 6E, Thunderbolt 4, but the most impressive element, I think, is the brand new 4 uh, and it is. The 4K OLED is the best feature of this machine, but I have to say everything else really just wraps up the package and makes it so easy for me to recommend. And as this goes on sale, it's going to be even easier to recommend. Let's take a listen now to the 14T. Make sure my volume is all the way up. And here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my first update on my experience with the Lenovo Yoga 9i for 2022. Now, this is the seventh generation of this top-of-the-line 2-in-1 Ultrabook, and it has been completely reimagined. And the good news is, they did an excellent job. Now, granted, this is just an update, not a full review, but so far, I am thoroughly enjoying what Lenovo has put together. I'm stopping it there. The 9i is superior uh, when it comes to audio without any hesitation. Yes, now we have B&W branding. We didn't used to. Uh, you know, we have B&O branding uh, on the left with HP, which they've been doing for a while. And the 14T has better audio than the 13T, which, you know, was one of my favorite Ultra books when I got it back in 2019. But it just can't live up to the dual uh, subwoofer system that exists with this soundbar 
with the 9i. And that's historically been the case. Uh, the 9i, the C940 before it, really when it came to audio performance, I mean, that soundbar goes into whatever two-in-one position you use, and it's excellent. Really best in class for uh, two-in-one and best in class for an Ultrabook for that matter. So you've heard the audio. Now let's talk about the thermals. Um, the 14T, that's another advantage it has, even in its old age, it is, it will run cooler. Now, when it comes to throttling, that's a, another story, but when it comes to fans kicking on, what they sound like, how frequently they're going to run, they both do a really good job, but HP does better. So that makes me wonder what will happen once we get that 12th gen hardware. It should get even better because the Yoga 9i from the previous generation with 11th gen hardware improved a lot. Uh, the 9i was definitely much louder uh, and the fans were on much more often than the 14T. So that makes me wonder when we do get a refresh with the 14T, how much more quiet things will be granted the inherent benefits of the newer hardware, this more powerful processor, uh, but of course having dedicated cores to basically taking a break as opposed to doing heavy lifting. And that's what makes the 12th gen uh, CPU unique compared to the previous generation, which is pretty much on all the time. But I digress. Uh, when it comes to overall fan noise, again, both of them are excellent. Um, if you put it in quiet mode, which you can see right now, I'm in the cool mode, that's the equivalent. And over here, uh, you would jump into uh, the HP, well, I thought I had it up, uh, the command center, and the command center will let you pick a profile. There are more profiles on the HP. Another nice thing about the HP are the, the display settings, because when you jump into the HP display control, you can actually pick what color space you want uh, this OLED to represent. So if you want DCI-P3, Adobe RGB, uh, you've got it. That doesn't exist over here, but remember, that's just a preset. It's a convenience. Don't get too wrapped up into that because this display, in my opinion, is just as good, if not better, than what you've got uh, with the Spectre. And that's just because it's larger and, in my opinion, uh, a better aspect ratio with a higher resolution. Uh, and I don't see any uh, problem with either of them, which means, as I've stated over and over again, I prefer the panel on the right. So, Last but not least, we've talked about pretty much everything. Uh, you know, the internals, uh, the overall experience, build quality is great on both. Let's talk about I.O. and wrap this up. So the 9i, I told all of you it improved, uh, and it did. It got an additional Type-C port. We still don't have a card reader. I hope that eventually that'll be something that gets added. Type-A USB port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports right there. That's also how you're going to charge the machine. Speakers. Um, you are able to open this with a single hand, for those of you that are wondering. Some, you know, redundant branding on the front lid. I, I wouldn't call it obnoxious, but Lenovo and Yoga on the same uh, surface is a bit much. Um, so something to think about for Lenovo in the future, but I'm being really critical. Another speaker right here. And then we have the power button, uh, which does have an LED. Right now you can see because the machine is sleeping, it is blinking. Uh, a Type-C port. Now, again, this is not a Thunderbolt 4 port. That would have been nice, but it's nice to have another port, isn't it? It means the Thunderbolt 4 ports don't have to be occupied for something that doesn't actually utilize Thunderbolt 4. And then a headphone microphone combo jack. Uh, plenty of ventilation, and again, the machine does stay pretty quiet, pretty cool. Definitely an improvement from the previous generation. No question about that. The 14T, uh, Again, really nice build quality, customizable to some degree on colors, three different colors, two colors here. I didn't mention that. They also have oatmeal besides this gray color. Uh, when you look at the side of this, um, I imagine that there may be a refresh that we get rounded edges, just like the 16T that I reviewed a while back. We have a micro SD card reader, uh, Thunderbolt 4. Uh, then you also have a, a headphone microphone combo jack, another Thunderbolt 4. That is how you're going to charge this on the uh, you know gem cut corner and then you have a type a usb port so very similar io additional port here micro sd card reader here so that's really a matter of personal preference kind of like well i wouldn't say the design language but whether or not you really want that card reader on board i personally do prefer it but i have to say having an additional uh, Type-C port to me is more important believe it or not never thought i would say that but if you know Lenovo 
forced me to choose, I'd rather have an additional port because these days I have to use card readers in many cases anyway, and the built-in card readers just aren't up to snuff. And if I'm, if I'm using a Thunderbolt dock, then it all becomes uh, you know, irrelevant anyway. So from a build quality standpoint, again, both are excellent. Uh, plenty of ventilation. I mentioned both have soldered RAM. Uh, weight is very similar. You already know everything under the sun about the internal performance. So it really comes down to which you like better. I think that HP's uh, design, the subdued HP logo, is definitely more attractive, but personally, I prefer this redesign of the 9i. The rounded edges are just a little bit more modern, and I wouldn't be shocked if HP has something similar in store for the Spectre 14T, just like they did with the 16T. So really, it comes down to budget. Uh, both of these are excellent. It comes down to whether or not you want to wait for the uh, refresh of the 14T. I didn't even mention getting into the pen performance because as I stated, both are good. Neither is a game changer. The Precision Pen 3, um, unlike the previous generation that was housed on board, this one isn't. Uh, it does come with a sleeve also like the 14T. Another thing that makes me feel like Lenovo is emulating uh, the HP experience, but HP still does have some level of magnetic uh, even though I was struggling there to get it to actually stick, it is magnetic and it will actually stick to the machine. Whereas uh, I'm having a problem with it right now, but I'll pick it up to make this happen. There it is. You cannot do that with the yoga. And I think that's a bit of a miss, but there is a place to store the pen on the sleeve, uh, just like there is with the 14T. Just something to be aware of. I do prefer, however, that we have a full-size pen now. I think that's a major upgrade. I think the trade-off that you could lose this is a worthwhile one because Lenovo was the only manufacturer with a siloed or housed pen on board, but it came at the expense of being one of those thin styluses a la, you know, your Palm Pilot. So I think this is an improvement um, overall. Both really do the job. Uh, they aren't, you know, pen input devices first. It's a secondary feature like any two-in-one, but I think it'll satisfy the student. It'll satisfy the amateur artist, the enthusiast. And even though this is an, an inking review, you're not going to buy either of these and say, wow, you know, I wish I went with the other when it came to inking. It's just not the case, especially with Windows devices in general these days, unless you go Surface Pro 8 or a Samsung product, there you're gonna get a little bit of a better inking uh, experience, but I wouldn't recommend the SAMI products over either of these. So that pretty much rounds things out. I mean, I, as I stated at the top of the video, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. It's really a matter of which design you prefer, availability, do you need something right now? This isn't out until May, as I mentioned, and I don't know what the ship date will be, but hopefully it'll be May. This is available now, and it's you know $500 less, and if you can wait for the refresh, it will be a similar price to the Lenovo, but it may be less expensive still. And if HP decides to introduce a 14-inch machine with a similar 16 by 10 aspect ratio, well, then HP is going to get my money. I I'll put it that way, because if you haven't already... Uh, figured it out through the course of this video, I've been repeatedly stating that Lenovo is playing catch up in just about every department. Uh, so with that said, they've done an excellent job, but if HP pulls another trick out of their sleeve or hat or whatever you'd like to point to and gives us a display similar to this, then I would go with the HP in a heartbeat. But as it stands right now, personally for me, the Yoga 9i is the winner. It does have the edge of new hardware, but it also has the edge of the better display. And remember, you can get this in a 2.8K OLED option eventually, and you can go with the full HD option with eight gigs of RAM rather than 16 like I have here. That'll set you back uh, a little over $1,200. So I personally think this is the way to go, just like I think with the Spectre 14T, the OLED is the way to go as well. Remember that RAM is soldered? You can only do that once, it can't be undone. But uh, that pretty much rounds it out. Two great machines. I've said it over and over again, and that's because it's been a while uh, since I've had two machines that are so closely uh, comparable in you know just about every element, and it's like they're sharing notes at this point. And I'm thankful for it because historically, as much as I liked comparing, let's say, the 13T with this machine before the 14T existed and before the 9i did, there were still too many things separating them. Now that gap has shrunk to a tiny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny hole. The choice is yours. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see and hear what all of you have to say about which machine you think is right for you. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. 
Later.